this is the next step on how to blind solve the Rubik's Revenge. At this point, all your corners should be oriented and all your edges should be placed correctly. Alright, so we're going to. Next part is the permutation of the corners. This is done slightly differently and has corner parity, which you're going to have to do something a bit different. It doesn't work the same way as on the 3x3. Three three. Alright, so here's what you do. Um, you're going to memorize it just as you did normally. It's going to be corner 1, 2, 3, 4. On the bottom, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's all memorized the same. So, you look in here. Okay, this has to go to location 4. Okay, there's one rule you have to do. Some people, like, um, they did the permutation. Some people did the inverse of the permutation in order to um, solve such thing as, like, location 1. Um, some people asked me about this, and they said, uh, for location 1, can't you technically uh, take the cube, turn it clockwise, like such, so you're facing the blue side, and actually perform the inverse of the algorithm, so it's still switching these two edges and those two corners. If you have no idea what I just said, just ignore that. Um, some people who want to do that, you can't do it for this one, because you have to follow a, consi a consistent pattern. The only algorithm you're allowed to do is the one I gave you in the blind solve tutorial for solving your corners, and um, the Y permutation. I'm not going to write it down, I'm not going to give it to you, just because it's going to be annoying and a waste of time, if you don't want to do it. So, uh, the Y permutation... Really, the only corner I use it for is corner 4, which I have to solve. So, either you're going to do your setup move of 2Fs, a DI, and 2Fs, and then do your permutation and undo the setup moves, or you're just going to do a 1Y permutation, where it switches these two corners and these two edges. I've told the people you can use that, a few people you can use that, and it works. Alright, so, you're going to memorize just as normal, and, uh, See, look, okay, this goes to location 4. So I'm going to do the Y perm. Only turn outer layers for this. I can turn this. Alright. So now, as you see, I switched it out here, and your edges should be switched. Okay, here is the problem that I've been presented with solving the corners. Um, both of the algorithms have uh, the same side effect. All the top centers rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise. So really, this is where it gets difficult. So this is what you have. So, um, corner parity is really annoying, and I'd say 75% of the time you get it. So, um, technically there's two forms of corner parity. I'll go over both when, they, when we get there. This is corner 6, so I say okay. Set it move it's 2 Ds and 2 Fs. Alright, I do the algorithm. Undo the set of moves. And now the corner's in place, and my edges are solved again. Alright, I have to go to do corner 8 next. You should really know what to do here. If you don't, you need to look back at my tutorials to figure it out. On how to blind solve the Rubik's Cube. Corner 7 is next. Corner 1 is next. There's set of moves uh, 2L and 2Fs for this. And now all my corners are solved, and I have corner parity. Okay. What corner parity is, is basically where your centers are still turned incorrectly. And um, there's only one way to fix it. Every time you perform the algorithm, the same pieces are switched. These two edges are switched, and these two corners are switched. Then all of these centers get rotated 90 degrees. So if I performed it two times, if I did the algorithm twice, um, these uh, centers would get rotated uh, 180 degrees, and nothing would happen to these pieces. Okay? So, corner parity is very tricky. You need to memorize the number of times that you performed the algorithm to switch the corners. I know I performed it five times. It went four, six, eight, seven, one. So I did it five times, meaning that um, I have to do it. Th I have to do the algorithm three more times in order to put these centers back to normal. So, here's what you do in this situation. 
you know, okay, I have to do it three more times. Basically, you have to make it into a multiple of four. Next one is eight. So I think, okay, I have to do the algorithm three more times. So you're going to do that. That's two. And that's three. My centers are back to normal. Uh, however, if you look on the side, I have two corners switched. You may not necessarily have that. If you perform the algorithm in even num if all together out of um, wait a minute, no, that's wrong. If you perform the algorithm uh, an even number of times, and all your corners were solved like before you uh, even looked at corner parity, if you perform the algorithm even even number of times, um, then your corners should be solved and everything should be done. If you performed it an odd number of times to solve all the corners and then did an odd number of times to f fix your centers, you're going to be in my position. Okay? Um, in order to fix this, there's, uh, there's only one way to do it. And technically, you cannot solve uh, all this until all your centers are solved. And I'm going to explain why later. But first, here's what you're going to have to do. You want to pair up... Um, you want to switch these two edges... So that way, if you technically, if you performed your edge and you performed that permutation one more time, both the corners and edges should be solved. So, what you're going to do is you need to switch both of or all four of these edges. So you need to switch edges B and D and edges A and C. So you're going to perform it just like you were resolving all your edges again, except you're going to do uh, B D B and C A C. Okay. So um. You don't have to worry about uh, screwing up your centers or edges because since you're doing this an even number of times, there should be no edge parity. So I'm going to say, okay, you do B, which is your 2R turn. You do D. And then you do B again. Now, if you look, since I've done it three times, my edges, once again, aren't solved and my centers are rotated. However, if you look, I have these mismatched right here. So now I have to mismatch C, I have to switch C and A, okay? So I do C, I do A, then I do C again. Now if you look, I have my edges and uh, corners switched in the position that if you did the algorithm one more time, they'd switch. However, do not perform the algorithm, because remember, if you do, all of these centers will rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise again. So, at this point, you're going to leave this alone, okay? Once you solve all your centers, and you, uh, uh, using the method I teach you, once you solve all of your centers again, all you're going to have wrong are these pieces. In that case, perform the algorithm one more time and that's when the cube's going to be solved. Corner parity is very annoying and it's not, it's not that hard, it's just annoying. And sometimes you don't remember it at the end. Alright, so the next part is going to be solving the centers. Uh, for the sake of keeping a solved cube, I am going to perform the algorithm one more time. It is going to rotate my centers. But for a visual purpose, it's going to be easier to understand that everything is solved except for the centers. Okay? Um, it'll be easier for you to look at. If you want to do that, go ahead. But remember, you can't do that when you're blind solving. So, be very careful if you're going to do this. Now, I do not have enough time to explain even a bit of the centers. Centers are the hardest part of the cube. So, uh, that is... The next part on how to blind solve the Rubik's Revenge. Thanks for watching.